other coders. There are questions that we as humanity still cannot find definite answers to. Questions that were challenging many generations of writers, scientists, philosophers, and when we think we've found a reasonable answer, very soon we begin to doubt it. But I wonder, what if we could ask those bright minds about their thoughts on resolving those questions and how did they get to the answers? Unfortunately, we still don't have a time machine to ask them these questions personally, but we have other artifacts such as books, films and, more recently, the internet. Thanks to the latter, we have a chance to pretend traveling back in time and challenge the great minds of their time with these questions. Specifically, we can travel to the 26th of September of 1985 and ask a famous scientist, Richard Feynman, do you think there will ever be a machine that will think like human beings and be more intelligent than human beings? First of all, that you think like human beings, I would say no, and I'll explain in a minute why. I say no. And second, that they'd be more intelligent than human beings is a question, intelligence is to be defined. If you would ask me, are they better chess players than any human being possibly can be? Yes, I get you, someday. Are they best, better chess players than most human beings right now? One of the things, by the way, that we always do is we want the darn machine to be better than anybody, not just better than us. If we find a machine that can play chess better than us, it doesn't impress us much. We keep saying, and what happens when it comes up against the masters? We imagine that we, human beings, are equivalent to the masters in everything, right? The machine has to be better than a person in everything that the best person does at the best level, okay? But it's hard on the machine. <laughs> but with regard to the question of whether to make it to think like a machine, my opinion is based on the following idea that we try to make these things work as efficiently as we can with the materials that we have. The materials are different than nerves and so on. If we would like to make something that runs rapidly over the ground, then we could watch a cheetah running. We could try to make a machine that runs like a cheetah, but it's easier to make a machine with wheels, with fast wheels, or something that flies just above the ground in the air. When we make a bird, the, the airplanes don't fly like a bird. They fly, but they don't fly like a bird, okay? So they don't flap the wings exactly. They have in front another guy of a gadget that goes around, or the more modern airplane has a tube that you heat the, the air and squirt it out the back, uh, a jet propulsion, a jet engine. Uh, has an internal rotating fans and so on, and it uses gasoline. It's different, right? So there's no question that the later machines are not going to think like people think in that sense. With regard to intelligence, I think it's exactly the same way. For example, they're not going to do arithmetic the same way as we do arithmetic, but they'll do it better. Let's take mathematic, very elementary mathematics, arithmetic. They do arithmetic better than anybody, much faster, and differently. But it's fundamentally the same, because in the end, the numbers are equivalent, right? So that's a good example of it. We're never going to change how they do arithmetic to make it more like humans. That would be going backwards. Because the arithmetic done by humans is slow, cumbersome, and confused, and full of errors. <laughs> Where these guys are fast. If one compares uh, what computers can do to the human beings, you find the following rather interesting comparisons. First of all, if I give a human being a problem like this, I'm going to ask you for these numbers back every other one in reverse order, please. Right? Now, I'm going to series of numbers, and I want them to, you to give them to me back in reverse order every other one. I'll tell you, I'll make it easy for you. Just give me the numbers back the way I gave them to you. <laughs> you ready? One, seven, three, nine, two, six, five, eight, three, one, seven, Two, six, three. Anybody got going to be able to do that? No. And that's more than, not more than 20 or 30 numbers. But uh, you can give a computer 50,000 numbers like that and ask for them any reverse order, the sum of them, or do different things with them and so on, and it doesn't forget them for a long time, etc. 
So there are some things that a computer does much better than a human, and you'd better remember that if you're trying to compare machines to humans. But what a human has to do for his own always, they always do this, they always try to find one thing, darn it, that they can do better than the computer. So we now know many, many things that the com humans can do better than the computer. She's walking down the street and she's got a certain kind of a wiggle, and you know that's Jane. <laughs> right? Or the sky's going in and you see his hair flip just a little bit. It's hard to see, he's at a distance, but that particular funny way that he, the back of his head looks, that's Jack. Okay? To recognize things, to recognize patterns, seems to be something that we have not been able to put into a definite procedure. You would say, I have a good procedure for recognizing Jack. Just take a lots of pictures of Jack. By the way, a picture can be put into the computer, in fact, by this method here. If this were very much finer, I could tell whether it's black and white at different spots. You know, in fact, you get pictures in a newspaper by black and white dots. And if you just do it fine enough, you can't see the dots. So with enough information, I can load pictures in. So you put all the pictures of, of Jack under different circumstances and ask the machine to compare it. The trouble is that the actual new circumstance is different. The lighting is different, the distance is different, the tilt of the head is different, and you have to figure out how to allow for all that. And it's so complicated and elaborate that even with the large machines with the amount of storage that's available and the speed that they go, we can't make, figure out how to make a definite procedure that works at all, or at least it works anywhere within a reasonable speed. So recognizing things is difficult for the machines at the present time. And some of those things are done in a snap by a person. So there are things that humans can do that we don't know how to do in a filing system. So uh, it is recognition. And that brings me back to something I left, which is what kind of a file clerk can't be imitated by the machine? A file clerk that has some special skill which, which requires recognition of a complicated kind. For instance, a file clerk in the fingerprint department which looks at the fingerprints and then makes a careful comparison to see if these fingerprints match, is not been, is just about ready to be, it's hard to do, it's almost possible to do by a computer. You'd say there's nothing to it, I look at the two fingerprints and see if all the blood dots are the same, but of course it's not the case. The finger was dirty, the print was made at a different angle, the pressure was different, and the ridges are not exactly in the same place. If you were trying to match the exactly the same picture, it would be easy. But where the center of the print is, which way the finger is turned, whether it's been squashed a little more, a little bit less, whether there's some dirt on the finger, whether in the meantime he got a wart on his thumb, and so forth, are all complications. These little complications make the comparison so much more difficult for the machine, for the blind filing clerk system, that it's too much, much, much too slow to be certainly utterly impractical, almost, at the present time. I don't know where they stand, but they're going fast trying to do it, whereas a human can go across all that somehow, just like they do in the chess game. They seem to be able to catch on to patterns rapidly, and we don't know how to do that rapidly, automatically. Notice how little or how much time has passed since one of the most prominent scientists of the 20th century questioned the computer's ability to compare fingerprints or recognize patterns, considering that nowadays unlocking the phone with your fingerprint or facial expression is something taken for granted. That was V, please give this video emperor's thumbs up, toll the bell and subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.